Hey everyone, I'm standing in front of a pretty big project we have ahead of ourselves. We're making a mold for a part called the trending frame, and we don't know if this is gonna work. I'll tell you all about that and the part we're gonna make off this mold, but first let's just jump right into machining this. We're looking at the stock for a mold that we're making for the trunnion frame. This is MDF, and right now we have a rough cut on the router, and after that we'll do a finishing cut. A couple of things that we're concerned about with this, this is MDF as I mentioned. We really hate MDF just because it's not that great of a material, it kind of falls apart. Um, it's dimensionally unstable and expands and contracts with changes in temperature and humidity. Uh, we're trying to manage that here. We're, we're controlling the temperature in the hanger and we're monitoring the humidity. The reason we're doing MDF is because there are a couple of things with this part that we're not fully finalized on. Uh, we think we might have to change a, s a couple of aspects of the design of this, like there's some access holes to get to the landing gear retract system for a service. We might tweak that, so we didn't want to fully commit to a production mold just yet. MDF is pretty uh, cost effective. I think there's only uh, about $150 worth of material here. If we we're going to a production mold where we make a plug and then make a mold, you're in the you know, multi-thousand dollar range for that tooling. So this is uh, quick and effective. We're going direct to mold right here. So what we machine here will become the final mold. In production, we would machine a plug first and then make uh, a mold off that plug. So it's a little bit slower and more costly process for a full production tool. You can see uh, there's areas here where we've applied epoxy. That was something we were concerned about in the beginning. We cut all these pieces out, just rough rectangles and trapezoids cut with a circular saw. So they're not super precise pieces of stock that we glued together. And we knew there would be some uh, gaps maybe. And you can see where we've filled those gaps with epoxy after the rough cut, where, where those little gaps opened up. That'll all get machined just smooth and continuous after we do the finishing pass. It looks really ugly right now, but it'll look pretty nice when we're done. Ready to hit go basically on the finishing passes. It's actually gonna take 13 hours, we're gonna machine in this direction. Uh, there's a bunch of different tool path strategies we could use. You can go uh, in this direction, you can go in this direction, or you can have it follow the contour of the part. Uh, we think that machining in this direction will give us the best results with the rigidity and limitations of, of our router. We'll actually just let that run on its own and uh, should be able to come back when it's done and take a look at the final part. Any last words before we hit go? What I'm doing right now is just switching over to our finishing end mill from our roughing end mill. Uh, yeah, so the finishing end mill is a four flute, half inch ball. Uh, Show us what that looks like. So this should handle the majority of the finishing for the entirety of the mold. And then there's going to be a couple little features um, that define the edge of the part that we might have to get in there with a smaller uh, ball end mill, but for the most part, this should look like the finished mold after this guy covers the whole spread of the, the mold itself. After 13 hours, here we are. We're all finished with our mold. All the concerns that we had earlier about things falling apart or opening up uh, didn't come true and we're really happy with how it turned out. So the tooling path strategy to run back and forth along the x-axis actually worked out really well for us. We're really pleased with how the geometry is looking. Um, everything, yeah, everything looks great. So next steps for us, we're gonna get this off of the router table, get it over to the workbench, do some light sanding, some epoxy uh, coating on here, and then on to mold release. So let's get on to that.
We just finished applying epoxy to this whole mold and then sanding it. There's two reasons that we apply epoxy to this. Uh, first one is just to seal up the porous surface on the MDF. The other one is that uh, you might notice that there's a couple different colors of MDF board here. That's because uh, th these are two different brands and that's just what they had at the hardware store when we were picking up the MDF for this project. Uh, because they're different, they might sand at a little bit different rate when we're trying to make this smooth. So when we apply epoxy to this, it soaks in and then uh, cures and that kind of creates like a hard shell on this that makes it more uniform uh, hardness when we're sanding it so that these two different uh, brands of MDF sand at the same rate. Otherwise, um, they would maybe, uh, you get like kind of a step or a transition in between the two different types. Uh, now that we've sanded it, we blew all the dust off of it and we're ready to apply mold release. Before we get too far into actually making the trunnion frame off the mold, I thought it'd be good to take some time and explain what this part is and where it's located in the aircraft and what it does. So I've got the trunnion frame shown here in relation to the rest of the airframe. The airframe is kind of ghosted out and then we've got the trunnion frame highlighted. So what this part does is it sits in the fuselage and it supports the main landing gear and it transfers loads from the main landing gear into the rest of the fuselage. What makes this part a little bit unique uh, or why you might not find something called a trunnion frame on other light aircraft is because our landing gear are mounted to the fuselage and they retract back up into the fuselage. Normally on small tricycle gear aircraft, uh, these, the landing gear would be mounted to the wings. So because our gear struts are mounted to the fuselage, we need a structure to support them and transfer the landing loads into the fuselage. So this part's a little bit tricky to make because of its shape. It's got these, this weird uh, faceted kind of shape to it along with these flanges that have to interface with the rest of the airframe. That makes it difficult to design and analyze and then also tricky to manufacture. I'll tell you more about that uh, when we get to laying the cloth on the mold. So I, I think that's all we need to cover here. Let's jump back into making the part. We finished up applying epoxy to the mold. We sanded it and then we applied mold release. And you can see it pretty dramatically changes the color and the surface finish of the mold makes it smooth and also slippery so that uh, epoxy resin doesn't stick to the mold which is what we want when we pull the part off the mold so i'm just starting to lay cloth on here now i got the first layer of carbon fiber placed in the mold and you can start to see one of the challenges with this part which is the uh, complicated geometry requires that we use a special weave to uh, bend and conform around this geometry. We're using a 12 weave carbon fiber, and that specifically has properties that uh, it's drapeable and conformable to geometry like this. So you can see it can uh, bend and conform. There are a whole bunch of layers that we have to lay in this mold. It's a pretty uh, big structural part, so a lot of layers for a lot of strength. Uh, it's gonna take me a couple of hours to do that. So let's get to cutting cloth and laying it in the mold. finished cutting and placing all the cloth on the mold. I've also placed flow media on here and vacuum bag this whole assembly down. It all looks good, uh, but before we can infuse it, we actually have to put in a, a, an infusion line right here, or a line to port epoxy into this whole assembly. So we'll do that and then pull vacuum again, and then we'll be ready to infuse this. We finished infusing the part. All the cloth wetted out successfully. You can see that resin made it all the way out to the perimeter of the part and everything, the carbon's black, that's good. Uh, we cured it overnight and we're ready to demold it now. We've already cut the lines, the vacuum lines leading into the part. So you can see the vacuum bag's a little loose. We can start pulling this off. We're gonna take this out of the mold, see what it looks like and see if uh, our whole mold worked.
looks cool. Part came out of the mold just fine. Uh, we're pretty pleased with how it looks. Up next, we're gonna be trimming around the perimeter here to trim it to final size. You can see there's a little bit of a feature that we molded in to guide us in that step of the process. And then uh, we'll be on to the next component in the landing gear. So you can see that the surface finish, it's not as pristine as the, the surface finish we have on a lot of our other carbon fiber components. That's because the mold uh, dictates the surface finish on the part, the part picks up whatever we have on the mold. So because we used MDF, that's where we get this uh, surface finish that's not quite to our normal standard, but we can accept that this is a non-cosmetic part It's kind of hidden up uh, in the wheel well of the aircraft. So no one's really going to be looking at it But uh, yeah, our, our MDF mold did produce a decent part Really, this is a little bit bigger than anyone should ever go with a mold MDF mold I wouldn't recommend trying to say build a, a wing on an aircraft with an MDF mold, but we got away with it for this part Here's the finished part. You can see we threw it back on the mold just to get an idea how it interfaces with the mold. When we trim this up, the process was pretty simple. We just used an oscillating cutter and did a rough cut all the way around the perimeter. We had a feature that we molded into the part just to reference so we knew where the edge of the part was and how far to trim. After we did the rough cut, we took just some sanding blocks and then trued up the edges or cleaned up the edges so that it was uh, fine tuned right to the edge of where the part should be. From here, let's take a look at the inside of the part again, so we can see that. As the part sits right now, it's uh, four and a half pounds about. Uh, we're not fully finished with the part yet. There are some access holes we have to cut in here. Those will be placed on this face of the part and that's so we can reach through here and get to the motors that retract the main gear. Just recapping a little bit, this is the biggest MDF mold we ever made. We did have some concerns with this because of the dimensional stability issues and little quirks associated with MDF, but uh, we got away with it. We have a few more parts in the main gear that we still need to make before we can tile this together and install the main gear in the fuselage. We'll show that in subsequent videos, so be sure to continue to follow our channel to see all that progress. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. We applied a couple of coats of...